Well, good morning, everyone, and good evening, East Africa. It's 8.30 in the evening, uh, in your time. Uh, here in America, we're celebrating a, a weekend called Memorial Day. And it's a remembrance and memorial for all the soldiers that have fallen in course of battle for the United States. From the first soldier to fire a shot and be killed in the Revolutionary War to the last soldier last week. So we honor all the fallen today. In November 11th, we honor all our living veterans. And, uh, but today is for all those fallen it's for all those families that are gold star families. And so we enjoy our freedom and our, and our weekend, our garage sales, our barbecues on the foundation of the blood sacrifice of our soldiers. So I want to let you know that the Word of the Lord this morning is called Three Days in the Heart of the Earth. And we're going to be in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 6, verse 7 through 10. Heavenly Father, I pray for the power of your Spirit to cause your Word to flow quite powerfully this morning. Pray for your anointing upon us to uh, me to speak and your people to hear, eyes to see, heart to receive. And Lord, I pray for revelation today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, today's message, you're not going to get a whole lot of things to do. But you're going to be very aware of what happened in the heart of the earth after Jesus said it is finished to the time he was raised from the dead. That's an important time that everyone, I believe, needs the information and knows what's happening during that time. So let's look at verse 7 of Ephesians chapter 4. However, he has given us each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. That is why the scriptures say, when he ascended to heaven to the heights, he led a crowd of captives and gave gifts to his people. Verse 9, notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that he also descended to our lowly world and uh, to the uh, under the earth to the heart of the earth and the, and the same one also who descended is the one who ascended to higher than all the heavens so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. I would first of all say, talk about the death of Jesus and what it is. It's a physical death of Jesus, not a spiritual death. Jesus, the deity of Christ, the second person of the Trinity, cannot be anything less than God. He is totally God. He cannot be altered to be something different than who he is. God is the author of life and cannot die. God cannot be diminished by time or space or anything else that man can do or anybody can do. So the Bible is very clear about this, but I want to make this very clear because there's a lot of people that twist the scripture to give a story of Jesus 
dying spiritually and going to hell in the heart of the earth. And I'm going to start off with it saying that first of all it's a physical death. The very first sermon that Peter preached in Acts chapter 2, 24, but God raised him from the dead, freeing from him from the agony of death, because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. Verse 27, because you will not abandon me to the grave. The word grave is Sheol, Hades, where we, end, where we errantly get a translation of hell, but it literally means the grave. And uh, if somebody buries you and goes out to the cemetery, we don't say in English, we buried them in hell, right? But the old English word that translated the Sheol and Hades gave the inference of hellfire, which is Gehenna. But it actually is speaking of the grave, Sheol. So when we put some people in the grave, we're not putting them in hell, correct? Amen. But the translations of the Bible, of the, a lot of that, of that word, gives the impression that he was placed in hell when it simply means the grave. Nor will he let your Holy One see decay, the body de decay and to be destroyed. You have made me know known to me the path of life. You fill me with the joy of your presence. And verse 31, seeing what is ahead, he spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that he was not abandoned to Hades, which is the word for Sheol, which is the word for the grave. He's not abandoning him to the grave. Now, other translations say, he spoke of the resurrection. He was not abandoned to hell. That's an errant translation. And actually, uh, the word hell used in this context is outdated in our English language. So it gives you an idea of something else. Everybody with me? Yes, sir. Yes. Nor did his body specifically See decay. Amen. All right. Colossians one twenty two to make this perfectly clear in your uh, understanding. But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body. Soma physical. Bios physical. Your physical body. Okay. By Christ's physical body. You know, there's something about the reason that Jesus came and was born. He had to be in human flesh. God, he was made flesh and dwelt among us. Why flesh? Because it had to be a physical body. The blood had to be physical blood, not spiritual blood. And everything in the dynamic of Christ's coming was physical especially in a sacrifice, okay? Through death to present you holy in sight without blemish and free from accusation. 1 Peter 3.18 tells us, For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, qualified. <coughs> he wasn't put to death in his spirit. He wasn't put to death as God. No, put to death in his body, but made alive by the spirit. And you remember my Easter sermon where God, 
the Trinity raised Jesus from the dead. One of the reasons we know that Jesus did not die spiritually, John chapter 2, verse 19 and 21 says, Jesus answered them and said, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. In three days. If you're dead, you can't do anything. If you're alive, you can do things. Jesus alive raised the body of Jesus to life, along with the Holy Spirit and the Father. But the temple he had spoken of was his body. Revelation 1.18, Jesus says, I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I'm alive forever and ever. I hold the keys of death and Hades. Okay, that's uh, Hades is the Greek word meaning shield, the grave, the grave. Hades in English takes us in another direction, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But the, the actual word is Jesus saying, I have the keys of death and the grave. I'm so glad that we're not, when we bury you, we're not saying, and I commit their body to Hades. Who, who, would, who would understand that? Everybody would misunderstand that and think hell, which is rightfully understood in our language. Mm -hmm. But the Bible says we're talking about the grave, physical grave. The heart of the earth. I better explain that a little bit. Matthew chapter 12 verse 40 says this. For as Jonah was in the belly of the great fish for three days and three nights, and according to the Hebrew lunar calendar from uh, Nisan 14 through Nisan 17, so will the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. So that's where we get the phrase, the heart of the earth. So what was in the heart of the earth? Paradise on one side and hell fire on the other side. I would say that paradise is a well-groomed, beautiful park. And I was thinking of golf courses. <laughs> I was thinking of the beautifully manicured park. And sometimes when I'm golfing so bad that I just look at the park and say, you're in a beautiful place right now. Well, that's the Hebrew word paradise. Not necessarily the word Hashemim for heaven. Okay. And hellfire on the, the other side, which is guy, the Hebrew word, Gehenna, Gehenna, the Greek word, meaning hellfire. And it's not Hades, it's not Sheol that's used in this sense. So we're not talking about heaven, we're not talking about the grave, Hades, Sheol, we're talking about paradise and Gehenna. Okay? Okay. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> you want to stand up and scream? I'm okay with that. <laughs> Luke 16 is where we get our information, verse uh, 19 to 31. But I'm going to give you some scriptures that talk about the death of Lazarus and the rich man, and they both went to the heart of the earth. Verse 22 says, The time came when the beggar died and the angels carried him to Abraham's side. 
The rich man also died and was buried. In hell, Gehenna is the word, where he was in torment, he looked up and saw Abraham far away and Nazareth by his side. So he called to him, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. Reflecting the Hebrew Greek word Gehenna, hellfire, Gehenna, agony in this fire. The torment of Gehenna is so unimaginable. People have no understanding of the horror of never extinguishing being on fire. You know, none of us can imagine that. We just burn our finger a little bit, touch the toaster. But can you imagine this condition? I can't. It's beyond the horror, right? This is not the grave. This is Gehenna Hellfire. Verse 25, but Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is com comforted here, and you are in agony. And besides all this, verse 26, between us and you is a great chasm that has been fixed so that those who want to go from here to you cannot, I don't know why they would, but they cannot, nor can anyone cross over from there to us. And we know why they would want to do that. In chapter 23, on the cross, to the repentant thief on the cross, Jesus answered him and said, I tell you the truth, today you will be with me in paradise. Doesn't use the word heaven, paradise, to reflect the condition in the heart of the earth. If you need to go over the details of this, please look at my YouTube channel. It'll have all, all this there and also on Facebook again. So, question is, what happened during those days? Well, first of all, to start off with Luke 23, verse 46, Jesus shouted, Father, into your hands I entrusted trust my spirit into your hands. So, immediately while Jesus was in the, on the cross, his spirit was going to the Father, right? Mm -hmm. Not cut right. off from the Father, right? Mm -hmm. With the Father. Yes. And with those words, he breathed his last. So let's look at Mark, Matthew chapter 27, verse 50, and we're going through verse 53. Matthew's virgin, virgin, Jesus shouted out again, and he released his spirit to the Father. At that moment, the curtain in, of the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. At these four inches thick, woven, heavy, winged, th th hundreds if not thousands of pounds, being torn from top to bottom, could not be done by human hands. I would think it would take a pretty good chainsaw to work through that, mm -hmm. right? Top to bottom. 
in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. That happened as the earth shook, rocks split apart. Things were happening. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 through 20, I want to inject right here because it says, Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter the most holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way open for us through the curtain that is his body. What was hanging on the cross was the reality. What was hanging in the temple was the symbol, the what could be sure. When this was torn, that was torn, and it was finished. Paradise. Resurrection power for the Old Testament saints. I want to explain this very more carefully. Back in Matthew 27, we did verse 51, we're going to verse 52. And the tombs open, great earthquake, the tombs open. The bodies of my, many godly men and women who had died were raised from the dead. They left the cemetery after Jesus' res resurrection and went into the holy city of Jerusalem and appeared to many people. Got to look at this and think, okay, what kind of resurrection is this? First of all, it doesn't say that everyone who was to be resurrected was there at the cemetery. It implies that there was one cemetery that he's talking about and that some of the Old Testament saints that were there were raised. So, were there other cemeteries? Possible. Were there other far-reaching events? Possible. But Matthew's just telling us what happened to the local cemetery there that had a resurrection of physical bodies. The physical bodies had to come after the resurrection of Christ's physical body, and that's implied in this passage. So, when we talk about the Old Testament saints, Old Testament, everybody from Adam all the way to the last person has to pass through the blood of Jesus. Remember our study of the covenant. The first covenant is the eternal covenant, and that's tied in with the new covenant all through the blood of Jesus. So whenever somebody died in a righteous state, they waited in paradise. They were in paradise, waiting for the blood of Jesus to accomplish their salvation. For, for all eternity. So let's look at our verses again, 7 through 10 in Ephesians 4. How are, he has given each one of us a special gift through the generosity of Christ. We're going to go into the five gifts of the offices next week. That is why the scripture says when he ascended to to the heights, he led a crowd captive and gave gifts to his people. So he went to the heart of the earth, and those who were captive in paradise were led to heaven in spirit. Notice that it says he ascended. This clearly means that he also descended in into the lower regions, or the heart of the earth. And the same one who descended is the one who ascended higher than the heavens, so that he might fill the entire universe with himself. 
So Jesus went and preached to the captives about his blood. They received the blood of Jesus because that's what they live for, according to Hebrews chapter 11. And he, after he raised from the dead, those captives were now in heaven. So they're there waiting for us. On the other side, there's the Gehenna, Gehenna, the, val the hell fire. So Jesus went there to preach to those lost spirits who rejected him, rejected the covenants, rejected God, people like Haman, people like Sanballat and Tobiah, people like the Old Testament is full of them, examples of people that are in the hellfire side. First Peter 3, verse 18 through 20 says this, For Christ died for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit, through whom he also went and preached to the spirits in prison who disobeyed long ago. Preached to them. They fully are aware, they fully know that the blood of Jesus was rejected from, by them. God's plan, God's covenants, God's dispensations, all God's doing was rejected by them. And for what purpose? Well, Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9 says this, Jesus, being found in appearance as a man, humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. You find the word name, Hashem, repeated here, Hashem. Jesus' name the name of Jesus Christ in our language, Hashua HaMashiach, Yeshua, is the name above all the other names. It's greater than the name of Yahweh. It's greater than the name of Adonai. It's greater than the name of Hashem. It's greater than any other name. We're not saved by those names. We're saved by the name of Jesus Christ. And you don't have to speak Hebrew to get saved. Amen. The name of Jesus Christ in our language envelops everything that resonates with God in the character and nature of Jesus. The name that is above every name. That the name of Jesus Every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. Whether they liked it or not, they were bowing at the name of Jesus Christ. He was preaching to them and saying, You are cursed, you are abandoned from my presence. I'm here to tell you, the reason that you are here. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And with that, the stone was rolled away and he walked out. He didn't need the stone to be rolled away he could walk out like he proved a few days later going through walls. But the stone needed to be rolled away so you could look in and know that he's not there. 
Amen. Amen. Jesus was busy during those three days and he was accomplishing everything that, preaching everything that was finished on the cross. And he was never dead spiritually. You know what makes my head, my blood boil, boil, my hair curl? When I hear, oh, Jesus had to be born again in the heart of the earth because he was dead. And, just, and by the breath of the Father, turn that radio off. That person doesn't know who God is who would declare that Jesus is not God by inferring that he was less than God and dead in the heart of the earth. If you distort who God is, you're on the wrong side of the fence. Everybody got a clear picture of what happened? Amen. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for your word today. We thank you for the atonement that happened on the cross. When Jesus said, it is finished, he meant exactly that. And then he proclaimed and released captives and preached and was raised from the dead. And we highly exalt you, Lord God, and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.